is, uh, so I get this page to load because I am bad with remembering names. A little bit of Victor Gorgia. Uh, and Suleiman, just as you start handover, it looks like we're, we're drifting. Might be going west again. Yes, we are. Roger. Yeah. Soundings by Holly Felt. Praise this is Nav. Any bookstore. Again, we are drifted towards uh, west. So many nodules. I read a really good book a few years ago, and I just cannot remember the title, but it was all about fisheries and basically how we're depleting our ocean of fish. You should see the rest of it. Let's see. Drifted here, drifted here, drifted here, drifted here. Go on, I'll come. Upcoms. Goodbye. Right, so we are up in the control van here, and it's coming up on 4 p.m. HST. Uh, we're gonna start uh, trickling in the uh, folks on the next shift and uh, changing over. So normally, so you might hear some extra noise and some new voices. For those of you joining us recently, we are about eight hours into a 24-hour dive. Ascending the Mercury Seamount. The plan is to cover about four horizontal kilometers as we climb up the ridge. So we've seen some big changes in the, the substrate that we're passing over and the, the amount of rock, and the amount of sediment. So I'm looking forward to seeing what we find a little further up as the ridge gets a little steeper. Bridge, are you calling me? Okay, stand by, hold position. We are now uh, changing the watch, and then uh, you will have the order very soon. Thank you.
front row, back row, when you're ready, can you give me a situation update? Where we are, what we're doing? From your point of view? <laughs> Yes. Yep. Okay. And um, do you mind zooming out on high pack just a little bit so I can see what waypoint three is? Okay. Yep. Great. That makes sense. Come full super extra wide, please, Steve. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. There's something in the end of the f slurper. Yeah, when they try to collect a sponge, it had a paragordia attached, and it's kind of stuck in there. Roger. Okay. Huh. Should we, have they tried flushing? I'm assuming yes. Um, I don't actually know. Um, okay. Yeah, I don't know. We're on flush jar. Let's just give her some flushage. Is this the first time something has gotten stuck in the no. slurp? <laughs> I guess it's no. <laughs> well, on this expedition, I'm sure it's happened before. I think it's happened before this expedition. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, that's neat. Okay, well. Yeah. Hmm. I guess we'll just ignore that. Okay, thanks to everyone joining us from Canada, Australia, Taiwan, Singapore, Portugal, Philippines, UK. Happy to have you all here. We're about eight hours into a 24 hour dive. So still a good ways to go, but we are making our way through uh, all of our waypoints. How have our attention's been on the gauge check? Let me see. Gauge check tensions. Uh, a little enough. bit lower than usual, yeah, I think. Pretty shallow, that's nice. 7,000 to 9,600. Great, okay. Okay, can set up here.
So we're seeing a couple different things <clears throat> in our field of view here. Looks like a big anemone, some paragorgia, chrysogorgia, bamboo corals, lots of chrysogorgia. Beth, was there anything particular about Mercury, uh, Mercury Seamount that um, made us come here? Um, sort of any major differences from Soleday, or was it more like proximity? So it's so so uh, because it was so close by, was it opportunistic or? Um, <clears throat> we're trying to hit as many of the Seamount features in the Liliokalani Ridge as we can. Mm -hmm. This is the one that's closest to Soleday, so that's why we're here next. <laughs> Slightly bigger than Soleday. Um, we're targeting somewhat similar depths, or trying to, if we can make it across our full trajectory. Right. That's about it. Nothing else super <laughs> special. Got a fish there, center screen. Yep. Oh, nice. Yeah, so we're seeing more of these. Oh, we're seeing branched, I guess they're bamboo coral. Some of them were at least, as well as the bamboo whips. This looks a little bit, I'm somewhat surprised by the density we're seeing here since it kind of seems like a rubbly area. Oh, that might not be I was literally thinking that. super stable, but seems stable yeah. enough. Definitely looks more rubbly. For sure. How's everybody recovering from Easter dinner? I've already forgotten it happened. <laughs> that was yesterday. That was like four days ago, I think. <laughs> they made us a very impressive meal. It was they did. delicious and beautiful. They did. It's overwhelming in a good way. Yeah. And we got to see some arts and crafts talent. That's right. Yeah, yeah. that was amazing. Crew on board with their decorations. I know. They made bunnies out of towels. Can I please have a reset? A little sea star they over did. there. You they forgot about the olives. But all of eyes. Towels and <laughs> olives. Oh, that was a weird one. We're not doing that again. Oh, I missed the olives. That was an outlier. <laughs> you missed the olives? Were they in Those a special... Were the, they, they were the yeah. little oh eyes my gosh. of the bunny. Yeah. I didn't even notice that. <laughs> <laughs> talent. Pure talent. Yeah, shout out to our crew on board. Take good care of us. Bridge nav. Can we have another move five zero meters due north? Thank you. Somebody wondering about the max depth of this dive. Looks like the starting depth was 2,130 meters, and then we're going to go up about 700 meters in elevation. But that hold fast is really eye catching. Come on. Why doesn't this work? Ashton, are you ready for a zoom on Atalanta? Yeah, I think we're stable enough. Thanks, Stephen. It's a nice angle from Atalanta, Ashton. 
Oh, thank you looking, so much. Looking very nice. I uh, got some screenshots of the last watches, uh -huh. uh, Atlanta views, and um, they were making her look pretty good, like sitting <laughs> off of cliffs <laughs> and posing next to giant corals. Oh. So I'm not nice. saying it's a competition. <laughs> <laughs> we're not saying it's not. <laughs> My work is cut out for me today. <laughs> How do you like the lights on Atalanta, Steven? Do you want me to play around with those at all? Uh, I'm happy with them, but if you want to play around, feel free. Okay, thanks. Do you guys like that one off or on? Can we see off on again? Here is off. Here is on. Mm. Gotta say, I kind of like it off, but. Uh, I like it off yeah. too. Yeah team off all right soft yes soft. <laughs> oh good one did we ever hear what the other watches names are no i don't know i don't know I don't are they yet. trying as hard as us to actually name themselves <laughs> i feel like they're not i feel like we're taking this too seriously guys I don't know if we're really trying that hard. <laughs> yeah, we got like one. We're like, all right, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> there was a little competition for a bit. I want to say we're that's halfway true. through the cruise now. Almost. Is that Tomorrow. true? Tomorrow. <gasps> Tomorrow will be no. half point. Half point. Anyone's counting. No. <laughs> I don't oh, know yeah. how you could tell, Trevor. <laughs> <laughs> it's because we have to figure out how many dives we can complete in the time we have right. left. Sample space and permits and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Timing, oh. That's sad. Can we get a partial on the? Yes, we can. Red stick. Red stick. We saw some C pens earlier. I'm not sure that that's what that is. And I, now that I'm seeing it come into profile, I'm realizing it's not a stick. Go ahead, Steve. It doesn't hurt to get a look anyway. I'm talking the center leggy one. The lower one there. I was talking about the lower one, but now I realize oh. it's not a stick. So let's just thing. have a nice look at both, all three of these things. All three. <laughs> <laughs> They're beautiful. Yeah, there's lots of things once you start zooming in. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, you can come wide. Chris, go wide. Thank you. What was that? Lo yeah, that long, see in the upper part, the longer striation of, of rock there? Mm -hmm. Kind of coming middle screen. Oh, are you looking at the Atlanta view? Both views. Oh, yep. Is that sheet It's flow? just like a little terracing of a sheet flow. Huh, mm. okay. Looks like. Definitely can see more of like the sandy looking bottom, I feel like, in this area. Yeah, well, it might be two things. One, we are coming up on a very steep cliff on mm -hmm. our side. Uh -huh. So it could be that stuff comes up the cliff and then it loses the momentum and drops particles. Mm, it really um, is like snow then, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> could also be that northeast of us, we think there's a carbonate platform on top of this seamount. It's a flat topped guillot which usually indicates that the volcano at one point in time was above the water surface or very close to it to be eroded away um, and have maybe reef structures on it. So as those break down, um, that might also contribute to the sediment. Mm. Could we get um, round thing. some still camera shots of these views. Lasers on or off? Can uh, lasers on is fine. We don't need to turn them off. What's that oh, just dropping off star. the bamboo? Was that a brittle star that just dropped? Yeah, oh. probably. Hey, you guys saw it. Did oh, I we saw it. Oh, 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 I was trying to type a highlight. <laughs> <laughs> Dang it. I was Some trying to do my job. <laughs> I'm trying to do my job and I missed it. Shelby, right. I still haven't seen one. Okay, good. <laughs> is it home. like wishing on a falling star? <laughs> <laughs> I think yeah. it is, yeah. <laughs> Every time I see one, I wish for another one. But uh, that doesn't help if you haven't seen one yet. So. Keep speaking it into existence for me, Trevor, so <laughs> I can see one. Ugh. All right.
Next time I'll just say shooting star. Yeah, just just shout it, and I'll just like <laughs> dart up from typing. Yeah, Shelby, keeping up on our communications over there and making sure our audience gets to ask questions and tune in and mediating a lot of different folks and conversations. So appreciate it, Shelby. Anytime. How's the current down there? Totally fine. Okay. What are those There's things in the lower fun. right? That, is it the, a dead sponge? Lower right. See those? Yeah, like, those are dead yeah, sponges. Dead sponges. Yeah. Dead for it. Oh, wow. yeah. Vertebrae they kind of look like the vertebra there. Yeah. Um, Nav, how are we feeling now about where our position is with the wall no longer on our west side? Do we want to? Uh, I think we're feeling pretty good. Okay. Um, did you want to head more up this slope, like more directly toward waypoint two? Um, we can maybe go a little bit more north. Okay. Just so we get kind of on the ridge side a little bit. Okay. I guess. Okay. Yeah. So we can proceed cautiously <laughs> with nothing to our west. Yeah. Sounds good. Bridge nav. Can we get another move five zero meters bearing zero two zero, please? Thank you. Head mostly north and just a hair east. Can we get nice. a partial on this while we're here? Yes, we can. And then I'm gonna work my way over that. this big rock. Ooh. Okay, Steve, go Ooh. ahead. what happened to cause it to fall over like that. Hmm. Yeah, just having a nap. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you can come wide. come wide. Another falling star. Oh, it's gone. Done. Just a little one. Oh. <laughs> it only fell like 20 centimeters. Hmm. And for those out there joining us, um, I believe, and Beth, correct me, but I think the Benthic Deepwater Animal Identification Guide by NOAA is what we're sort of using as our wish list. Um, so if you are wanting to just join in on the guessing or identification as we come up on different animals, um, you can go to oceanexplore.noaa.gov. Um, you can also just Google Benthic Deepwater Animal Identification Guide and just throw NOAA in there too, and it should be one of the first results to pop up. Chris Kelly popping in with uh, that fallen sponge was a foraid, so just like the apparently the ones that we had seen, completely dead. Mm. Kind of a little flat spot here. Earlier. Uh, in the dive, there was a similar kind of field, and so some nod, some of this material, which might be ferromanganese nodules, uh, or items coated in ferromanganese crust, were collected with our new to be named sampling tool. <laughs> Whether it's a ring net or scoop net, I don't know what it's called. <laughs> ring scoop net scoop. Ring net scoop <laughs> net. Yeah. I love that it's a blue net now. It was black. It's like very striking. Yeah, it's we in the water.
I'm actually surprised we don't see more brittle stars on some of these corals. Mm. I think that they would want to be up in the current. Can we get a partial zoom on this that's going out of the frame at the bottom? Yeah. That's something I haven't seen yet on this dive. Okay, go ahead, Steve. This one? Is that the right one? Yes, you are on the right one. It's the wrong list. Okay, you can come wide. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. That really gave a good view of how much sediment is laying on this rock. Mm -hmm. Couldn't tell if that was an arella or something else. So if Chris or Asako online, if you were able to identify that. I'd appreciate hearing from you. Okay. Okay. So not 100% sure on that ID. Could have been a Norella primnoid, might have been a bamboo coral. We'll keep our eye open for another one and maybe try to get a closer view. Oh, here's an interesting question. Someone's wondering what would be the most or what has been the most unusual or unexplainable man-made object you've ever encountered? Hmm. I found a bathroom. Oh, what? <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> I'm sorry, what? Donde <laughs> I found a toilet and a bathtub. Whoa. And that is definitely... Um, I don't think I found the sink. <laughs> Where was this? Coastal British Columbia. <laughs> Yep, that'll I do think it. that wins. That'll do it. <laughs> that'll do it. <laughs> I'm sort of mystified. Actually, I think um, one of the scientists was on the deck the other day mm -hmm. and saw a caution what floor sign float <laughs> by. <laughs> what? It's very sad, but also very funny. Not one yeah. of ours. <laughs> Just not to clarify, it was not one of ours. Not one of ours. Uh, oh. I think it belonged in the bathroom that Trevor found. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, what was this? <laughs> <laughs> okay. But, um, Lynette, whenever you're ready, I think I'm good with a more northeasterly ship's move. Okay. Sure. We have about 20 meters left on this one. Okay. That's fine. And then we'll head over... Uh, more toward the northeast. And do you mind zooming out a little bit more just so I can see yep. where we go after waypoint three? Yep. Okay, thank you. Yep. So getting an ID on that stocked sponge that we saw from Chris Kelly. Mm -hmm. It's a euplectid. Mm. Euplectolid, sorry. Uh, in the subfamily Bolosomene. No, you pluck the lid. What is that little crinoid down there? That was oh, in the bottom just one. That is on screen. Yeah, yeah. 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 I think so. A little bit more current here. From which direction? Pushing me down slope. Okay. Oh, so two seven zero. Someone's wondering what's the most common type of coral around here. Would we say bamboo is one of them? 
I feel like we see a lot of those or maybe something else. Well, the bamboos are the ones that stick out because they're tall, but mm -hmm. if you were to train your eye on the smaller things, mm -hmm. there's actually a lot of these bottle brush chrysogorgia mm. here, 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 oh, here, yes. here, 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 yeah. here. They win. Um, <laughs> so, you know, it, it's, and that's just where we have been in the last 10 minutes. Right. Um, so, uh, too soon to say. One of the things we'll be doing with the video from this cruise mm -hmm. is working with collaborators at the Dark Lab at the University of Hawaii, who, um, uh, Deep Sea Animal Research Center, who Bridge help. Uh -huh. Can we move five zero meters bearing zero six zero, please? Thank you. Um, but they will help video do video annotations mm -hmm. to try to identify where species are being seen. I don't know that they'll necessarily do abundance uh, information, uh -huh. but maybe just sighting. So, um, and then that data is put into the National Center for Environmental Information, NCEI, so others can look at that data also. Nice. When you classify these colonial animals like quantity, do you classify them by discrete colony or <laughs> by overall size or like number of polyps? Like, <laughs> how do you? That count? is beyond my pay grade. Um, <laughs> that's maybe a Steve Auskovich question. Okay. Um, uh, or maybe Asako knows. I'm not sure. Yeah. So I don't know if it's just like we saw it, or this is how long it is. Mm -hmm. This is how di diameter. I don't know. I have no idea how biomass estimates are made. Yep, Asako coming in saying that bamboo and chrysogorgia are the most abundant that she's seen, yep. but also some plexarid, is that how you say that? Yeah. And paragorgia, yep. Yeah. Going back to the weird things found during diving, someone uh, has shared that uh, NOAA ship Okeanos Explorer found some washing machines mm -hmm. back in 2017. Multiple, wow. <laughs> machines. Machines, uh, plural. 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 Okay. Well, I guess they got scrubbed. <laughs> <laughs> this is the longest rinse cycle ever. <laughs> I mean, yeah, somehow to your the clothes never get clean. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One thing I haven't seen yet on this dive are the stalked crinoids that we saw on our earlier dives north What's of here. Right here. What's that little guy in the middle? Well, I think that's a, a crinoid attached to something. I think you're right. Oh, yeah. Good right. eye. It's that a crinoid attached that. to a Walteria, oh. which we commonly see. Mm. Yeah. Um, but those five, five feather, yellow stocked crinoids that we mm -hmm. saw a lot of um, on the unnamed seamounts we dove on. Yeah. Outside the monument, we also saw a few on Solo Day yesterday. I haven't really seen those Io yet. Iocrinids, I think, is what uh, one of our scientists ashore. Thanks for the comment mm -hmm. to our scientist ashore, Chris Kelly. Um, so for our audience uh, who may be unfamiliar with Nautilus, um, uh, in addition to the scientists who are here on the ship, we also have experts ashore who are tuning in with us uh, and kind of have, a, we have a chat portal where we can share information about what we're seeing. And I, I am not a mac macrobiologist, <laughs> but I play one on TV. <laughs> and uh, I'm thankful for our scientists ashore who helped steer me in the right direction. Yeah, I second that.
Oh, I didn't really realize that crinoids were also um, called sea lilies. Yes. That makes that's, a, that's only sweet. the stalked ones, right? So you, is an unstalked crinoid called a sea lily? I don't know. Maybe it is only the stalked ones. I don't know. Oh, yeah, that's right. The adult is fixed to the sea bottom by a stalk. Cool. Stalked ones only. I think. It certainly does appear that like every little pile of rocks that gets you a little bit higher, it's just overrun with <laughs> various corals. Um, Makes all the difference, yeah. Yeah. There's another one yeah, of those Yeah, one of the really parades. fascinating things to think about is larval strategy. Like, mm -hmm. why, how did they, like this how rock. did that rock <laughs> become right. come so good? Mm -hmm. <laughs> is it just that the larvae were less successful on the lower ones? You know, it could also be that the larva is tumbling through the water. Yeah. And if it hits something, it's no, it knows that other stuff is also probably going to hit there, too. Yeah, that could be it, too. Yeah, I was wondering about the relationships between the different organisms on the same rocks. Prime real estate. <laughs> I'll give you 40,000 polyps over asking price. <laughs> this one. Lynette, do we know Erididae, maybe? the issue with here, um, drifting west? Was that usually related to like holding a ship's move and then starting a new one? Or is it random? Um, I think it was happening pretty much on every move. Can we get a closer zoom on that, please? Go ahead. Look at the texture. Wow. Thank you, Steve. Okay, thanks. That's all I got. Don't know that we've seen that yet on this dive. <laughs> yeah, what an interesting little sponge. Texture was different than what we've seen. Lefroyella. That was the name of that sponge. Lefroyella. Oh, okay. And are these pink coral bridge bamboo? nav? Can we move five zero meters bearing zero seven zero, please? Thank you. What do you say, Annabelle? Sorry. I was wondering if these pink corals are bamboo corals. Yes, it looks like Chris Kelly said yes. Thank yeah. you. I definitely knew the long ones, or sometimes I get confused because I feel like the <laughs> single long ones are so prevalent that I forget that they can be like branched too. I wonder if that's from a little sea star. <laughs> the, the little, the one underneath mm -hmm. missing some. Look at the base of that one underneath. Actually, I'll go back that way. It's got a bunch of split off other branches and maybe oh. another hold fast. Mm -hmm. Oh, it kind of looks like it, yeah. yeah. Yep. That That's might weird. be a, a second coral coming from top to bottom. Oh, weird, yeah. Underneath it's really the far away. Okay, thanks, Steve. So I have to admit that I need a storyline sometimes to remember the names of things. Uh -huh. <laughs> so that I got to go back to the sponge. Y'all, just for oh a second, yeah, that Lafreola, Re Lafreola uh -huh. a sponge species has commensal anemones sticking their tentacles out of the pores. This is from wow. Chris, and that was what some Ooh. of that like texture was. Oh, cool. That is interesting. Yeah. Oh. Wow. Now it's going to stick with you, right? <laughs> it's so weird. I've forgotten the name. What's it, what's it called? <laughs> Do I have to pronounce it again and tumble all over myself? Lefroyella. Yeah. Okay, Lefroyella. Did I say that right, Bev? Left sure. Okay. <laughs> Lefroyella. It sounds like one of Cinderella's evil stepsisters. <laughs> 
the Freyla. La Freyla. <laughs> <laughs> he says a way to remember it is frills. Ah. Oh, it looks like crinoids without a stalk are called feather stars. Oh, yeah, that's right. Oh, thanks, they Jason. So win? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I thought so, I but I'm know. not sure. Sea lilies and feather stars. Someone has a tech question, not sure if anyone will know, but asking if OET makes available any computer, AI, or ML models um, and images, video data for citizen scientists to work on. Oh, good question. No, that's a good question. I don't think OET does the AI. Mm -hmm. um, there are ways that video is made available on YouTube, so anybody that wanted to right. apply their own AI model to it could. Um, there are... Um, it's a very active topic in deep sea biology at the moment is what are some of the best ways to try to apply AI mm -hmm. for um, identifying animals in the deep sea. Um, it is a challenging endeavor because all images are a little bit different, right? They're not all the same distance, the same lighting. Um, and so training those models can be challenging. Ooh. Oh, we haven't there seen we go. One of these. Ooh. We haven't Ooh, seen one of these yet on this not. dive, I don't believe. Pretty. Yeah. Ooh. So this is, where is it? You do a partial there, Steve. There we go. That's good there. Yeah, so this is a, I believe this is a different type of Chrysogorgia. Hmm. Wow. Eridogorgia. This is where Trevor tries to look down the center of the spiral. Yeah, it's, <laughs> and I it's got to the camera it's for it. It's a bad angle on this one, but. Yeah. You know me, Steve. Iridogorgia coming in from Asako. Yep. Am I saying her name right? Thank you. Asako. Asako. Iridogorgia. Yeah, Iridogorgia is a type of Chrysogorgia, octocoral. So, <coughs> um, I have in a the same family as some of these other Chrysogorgia we're seeing, but mm. a different. Is brittle star going to jump? Different genera. Let's see. Ooh, make it jump. I'm Let's looking, zoom I'm looking. Sponge, please. Jump. <laughs> make it jump. Don't jump, don't jump. <laughs> you have too much to <laughs> eat up there for. <laughs> yep. Oh, wow. no. They're not leaving. Uh, <laughs> Ooh, that's... Weird three stalk I thing. I know. What's going on? What's that about? There's a crinoid at the base, too, it looks like. A feather star, as we've recently learned. That poor sponge is just like weighed down. Oops. Weird. So this sponge is a calophagus. Calophagus. I guess Trevor and Lynette. Mm -hmm. As we're coming up on this feature, I'm wondering if we want to stay on kind of the northern side that's steeper and kind of have a southeast heading for Herc instead of being right up on the top where it's going to be flatter. Sure. Do you want to check out the flat part first before we make that call or do you want to just sure. go right Sure. Yeah, over we can go ahead and go up there and then just swing over if we feel like it. Sure. So I'll let Lynette figure out how the best way to get us over there. Roger. I'm sorry, a southeast heading for Herc? Like when Herc comes up on the northern side of this ridge feature, and if it were having like a, a heading facing towards the southeast. Okay. Like looking okay. towards the ridge. So from okay. the northwest aspect. Gotcha. Looking southeast. Can you see where my cursor is, Beth? Yes. Do you think a path like along this contour? Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Okay. Soft yes. 
Is that for me? <laughs> okay. Yeah, I think anywhere along this ridge would be okay if we're getting blown west. Um, anywhere from oh, yeah, here, we're going into shallow water. Yeah. So, I mean, deeper water. Right. So, yeah. Okay. Do you want to try to stick with the ridge then, or or off to the to the north side? Yeah, maybe it? if you keep the ship just to the north of the center line of that ridge. Okay. And then it looks like the current is blowing us west anyway. So I think that'll achieve our purpose. Okay. Can you zoom in on this guy, please? Yeah. So this is a, I believe, a, a colosoma. Oh, yeah, we've seen these, I think. Yeah, we've seen. Yeah. Um, or maybe it's a psychocalyx sponge. Uh, Euplectilidae again. Yeah, psychocalyx. Maybe a couple tiny little barnacles on it. Oh, hello. Yeah. Me. I'm not sure if that's what that was. Ah, snail. Yeah, snail would make more sense than a barnacle. This looks steep. Yeah, feels steep yeah. too. It's not flat. <laughs> Definitely not. Bridge nav. Can we do another step? Five zero meters, bearing zero seven zero, please. Thanks. This isn't updating, is it? Diane, do you know how many samples we've taken so far on this um, this dive? Yeah, I can give you an update of that. We have taken three different rock uh, samples, one of which is some of these nodules um, from the field a little bit higher up. Mm -hmm. We've taken two sponge samples and two eDNA samples. So we still have a lot of sampling room on HERC. Um, but this is a long dive also, so we're trying to save some room. Right. Always for the, you know, final hours as well. So you never know what you're gonna see. Nice. Yep. And here we go. Oh man. Okay. Oh, follow up question. Mm -hmm. um, someone's wondering sort of once samples are retrieved from the ROVs, once they are brought back onto the ship, sort of how do you, all the science team, prioritize what sort of gets handled first and what gets processed first? Um, you know, uh, maybe the biological ones and how that differs from the geological ones. Mm. Yeah, good question. Um, some things are temperature sensitive, uh, so we try and get those off the vehicle first. So things like uh, the rocks containing Beth Beth's microbes mm -hmm. are a priority to get off the off the vehicle first, as well as some of the um, biological species, and those go directly into a refrigerator mm -hmm. to keep them cool because they're coming up from you know depth where water temperature might be 1.5 C. Mm -hmm. So um, they need to be kept chilled, otherwise they're gonna we, we could ruin our samples essentially if, if right. they get too hot. Um, the next would probably be our Niskin bottles. Mm -hmm. We want that water to also be um, collected quickly and put into the fridge. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, and not to say that it is not important, but some of our geological samples aren't as temperature sensitive, right. and so therefore are not as time sensitive. And so they can, Already did. they can and will be dried eventually. Okay, makes sense. Look at this big leggy boy over here. <laughs> All sorts of tendrils. You're usually so good about knowing the actual names. I like it when you bust out with a big leggy boy. <laughs> <laughs> Makes me feel better about my own lack of coral knowledge. <laughs> Um, Trevor, do you mind pivoting left? I think there's something we might want to look at. 
Okay. Shooting star coming down the middle. Oh yeah, there it is. Right oh, it there. Just, just landed. landed. Yeah. Yes, yes, I caught it. <laughs> I'm the only one in this room. <laughs> I'm sorry, Ashton. I'm I still hyper. haven't seen one either, Ashton. Okay. Uh, <laughs> oh, uh, maybe this. <laughs> Trying to see what it is that Chris and Asako might yeah, be talking about. Yeah, they need about. a telestrator as well, don't they? Okay, zoom in, please. I think my mind would explode. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, circle, circle, this one, this one. <laughs> no, OK, it wasn't at that. OK, come wide. If Chris and so. Asako could tell me what color they think the Swiftia is that we might have seen, I will try to look at it. Yeah, just pause here for a moment, Trevor, if you can. Roger, paused. Pause game. <laughs> Bridge nav. Can we hold position here, please? Thank you. Okay, wispy red coral fan that has yellow polyps. Hmm. Uh, Maybe over to our left? left. Oh, yes. Where is that? Maybe this? I'm not sure. Oh, I can go down there real quick. We'll check it out. And I'll go right if that doesn't pan out. Or it could have been this. I'm not sure. Okay, zoom in, please. I do not see yellow polyps on that one. I don't either. Okay. Can come wide. Well, we do one more quick check over this way, and then we can move on. Yep. Shrimp. 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 Squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely the un the deep sea equivalent. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone has to say when they see the shrimp. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah, no. we can keep going, and you can put that ship's move back in, Lynette, if you okay. want. I will keep my out for Bridge nav. with yellow polyps. So. Can we move five zero meters, bearing zero seven zero, please? Thank you. Someone is wondering, is there someone in control of at Atlanta's camera, or is it using AI to aim the camera towards her can zoom in? <laughs> no, that is our super capable video engineer, Stephen. <laughs> That's actually Ashton aiming the camera. Oh, tag I team. <laughs> tag <laughs> team, it is a, it tag is. team. <laughs> it's real intelligence, real human intelligence. Exactly. Ashton intelligence. Flesh <laughs> intelligence. Ashton yeah. intelligence. <laughs> <laughs> I attempt to point. Zoom in, please, Steve. <laughs> A rose. Wow. A rose by any other name. <laughs> shrimp. And a little shrimp. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, basically, I uh, follow Hercules around, or Hercules follows me around, kind of depending. Um, and then I attempt to overcome whatever currents there are and just point at Hercules, and Stephen does all the magic zooming and focusing and making it look good. So the sponge we were looking at just a moment ago was another euplectilid, um, but it perhaps a different um, species, Hertwigia, or uh, genus, Hertwigia. So on channel three, I just put up the Atalanta computer. And you can see how Ashton <laughs> turns Atalanta. 
by clicking one degree in either direction at a time with a mouse. Yep. Or 10 degrees, or fortunately. Or 10, oh, dramatic. Someone <laughs> thought about that. <laughs> I also can tilt the camera up and down. Trevor, this looks like a good yeah. uh, eDNA spot. Uh, potentially, but also just a like, good zoom heading area, you know, in terms of looks like we're looking at the ridge, but That's near the edge. Thing. Rog. Is that a crinoid down there, that bright yellow? Yes, yeah. the yellow is a yep. crinoid attached to a Walteria with also a with lot of brittle stars. Yellow stars, stars wrapped brittle around star it. Brittle star city. Yeah. I'll probably need about 60 seconds before we can take uh, eDNA, so let me know in advance. Yep, okay. do some setup. Yep, it doesn't have to happen right here. Yeah, okay. We've already collected a couple on this dive. Roger. And we've got a long way to go. Long way to go. Can I give you a DVL reset? Yeah, wait, let me hold still for a sec and get okay. a good couple of pings. Good. See one more. Uh, wait a sec. That last ping was not very good. Oh, I missed it. <laughs> I didn't see where that one was. <laughs> I can't see them. Okay, we're gonna sure, go for it. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, the other one was like this one. Ah, uh, okay. Have you used the cursor on here yet? I haven't, but I think I know how. Okay, so yeah. what uh, a good thing to do would be if we're sitting down sampling, you can drop the cursor on where all the USBL hits, then as soon as we take off, you do the reset. Okay, awesome. Another option there. Chris Kelly's saying something about, can we look at the coral in the center? I think that might have been a ways back, that red yeah. one. The coral in the center. The center of the universe, please. I don't know that it was referring to this. I think I it was think referring so. to, to that big boulder we were covering yeah. a few yeah. moments ago. Yeah. There's always a time delay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I am actually waiting on Atlanta to move, oh. so we could look okay. at this one. Yeah, yeah look at this one. I'm coming. <laughs> <laughs> the tortoise okay. and the hare. Wow. <laughs> Great. And if is that the as close as we can get, Stephen? This is the one. On That's the polyps? it right there. Full zoom. Is okay. this the one, Diane? Yes. Uh, he's coming through saying yes. Oops, oh, he's good. Right. Thanks. All right. Proceed at your leisure. Stephen, will we be able to put back up Atlanta's stats just here and there throughout? It doesn't have to stay on all yeah, the sure time. Yeah, sure thing. Uh, Gives people a sort of perspective of the numbers and as Ashton sort of moves and does things. Hey, Ashton, for the viewers at home, why do you only have Light Bank 1 and 5 on? Because otherwise we wash everything out. Nice. Do you <laughs> want to see? <laughs> <laughs> Give us an example, Ashton. Oh, man. <laughs> These things Ooh, are blinding. Yeah. We blinding. can only test them underwater <laughs> if people are around because they are, they're rough. <laughs> they're very, very bright. How many lumens? I don't know, Trevor, <laughs> how many <laughs> Pop quiz. <laughs> Pop quiz. Pop quiz. I don't think we've actually talked about that. No, we haven't. <laughs> uh, there's two lights per circuit, uh, except for light which only has one and each light uh, I don't know exactly 
which model these are, but I, they're either eight or 10,000 lumens each. Wow. And there are 17 of them. On her. Oh. On Herc. Oh, yeah, yeah. on Arg or at, at Atlanta. I don't know how many there are. Well, there's six banks. There's one that. Four banks with two lights. One bank is a spare with zero lights, and one bank has just bought light one. Did right. you help build Atlanta or uh, I, parts of it? Yeah, it showed up as an empty sh mechanical shell, and I helped do a lot of the uh, assembly of it. Oh, that's awesome. How long did that take? Uh, not so long. All the hard parts were done. Mm. Bridge now. Design. That's cool. Can we move five zero meters bearing zero five zero, please? Thank you. It was mostly just running wires. Mm. That sounds really fun. Okay, the can real we get a partial on this small yes, we sponge? Can. Sponge or coral? Sponge. Uh, stand by, sec, Steve. Just gonna make sure I don't land on anything here. Okay, zoom in there, please. Ooh. Keep it in the center of frame, Trev. It's a little bouncy down here. Yeah. See the coral's just closer to us than the sponge are also bouncing. Thanks, you can come on. Hey, thanks. Is that a euplectidae? Yo oh yeah, so I think it's a euplectilid. Euplectilid. Uh, not sure exactly which genera. Okay, my next question about Atalanta and Herc is how did they get the names butt lights instead of tail lights? Well, I feel like tail lights are red. <laughs> <laughs> also, this came before. Good I answer. Was Good answer indeed. <laughs> Someone's wondering, does Hercules ever turn around to look at Atalanta? How much you say focused on what's going on in front of him? <laughs> but if you want the truth, I have. <laughs> oh, well, never Atalanta. I've never seen Atalanta with Herc, but I've definitely seen Argus with Herc. Mm. And honestly, sometimes we do uh, bring Atalanta or Argus, whatever, the sled vehicle down very low mm -hmm. and in front of Hercules to get really interesting lighting, so backlighting some of the uh, Ooh. sponges we or corals. We should do that. It takes quite a bit of setup, so you have to be kind of spending some time in an area versus doing... Trevor, we're going to want to get a look at that. Mm. Yeah, Roger. But if you're doing imaging of a specific area, then you have time to set those up, do mm. it safely. Yeah. Ooh, that must be a cool view. Wow. That's interesting. Mm. <laughs> Annabelle. <laughs> it looks kind of furry. <laughs> yeah. It is Yeah, interesting. but look at the spicules on there. They kind of sparkle. I oh, I was like, they look like crystally a little oh, bit. Yeah. It looks interesting. I don't know it's why <laughs> everyone's laughing about Come that. On, Annabelle, I'm with you. Okay, I'm with you, you, girl. It does look interesting. I'm on your side. <laughs> Some of these are such a quick, oh, it's beautiful. And then something like that comes along. <laughs> That's interesting. <laughs> That's not what I meant. Yeah, Thank I'm you, sorry. Ocean. <laughs> <laughs>
Trevor, do you mind coming off bottom just a little bit so that we can pan right and left so and get a better situational awareness of what we're looking at? Let's do some seasick spins here. <laughs> <laughs> Close your eyes, Shelby. Because <laughs> I will definitely be the one to be like, whoa, my stomach. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Going back down. So the fuzzy sponge that we were looking at a little while ago was a rosellid. Sometimes looks like a woolly blanket, <laughs> according to our experts ashore. <laughs> it's better than a beard hat. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I like beard hat. It makes me remember it easier. It just rolls off the tongue, beard hat. Yeah, the sponge we're referring to here, uh, fuzzy hat or beard hat, <laughs> is a geodidae. We collected one on a cruise, uh, or a dive a couple days ago. Mm -hmm. All right, we're doing some dinner watch switching out, so we'll rejoin you in a few minutes. What I miss. <laughs> There's one of those vertebrate looking ones I under know. bubble cam. Yeah. What's the Ferelid. name of those again? It's Ferelid. 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 Fa. Fa. Sorry. A. F. A. R. R. E. I. D. Ferelid. Yeah, we saw several of those as well. They even had a little bit of a uh, look like some sediment building up in them. Oh. That's pretty. Yeah. Oh, this is a nice little spot of colors. Reds yeah. and pinks, peaches. Hey, Steve, can we do a half zoom and I'll just move up this little strip here? Whatever you think is appropriate. Is that a gray encrusting sponge back there too, top right? Oh Something. yeah, in between the rock. Yeah. Let's see what you see. All right. I'm going to dinner, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> <Go ahead. laughs> we'll see you soon. So I'll Thanks, be back. Thanks, Thank <laughs> All right. So the nav plan is to follow the ridge. Um, yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah, because we're drifting a little west now and again. Yeah, okay. Cool. Yeah, we'll just uh, keep following that then. Okay. Yeah, um, yeah, we've been taking our time with the sample collection since this is a 24 hour dive. Um, yeah, I think we have two geo samples. Um, we'll see what's at waypoint three then. Okay. I thought that'll probably be after I'm back off. I'm very pleased to see that we are out of the nodule field. Mm -hmm. That was going on for quite a long time. Was it really? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. More interesting. We did run through kind of a sea pen meadow, though. That was kind of cool. What? I miss the sea Ooh. pen meadow. It was also the nodule field. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah. I yeah, love sea, sea pens. pens. They're so it's weird. Just, these little dark red guys. Yeah. They're fascinating little creatures. Who does that? Sea pens, apparently. Yeah? Yeah. It's so nice to hear a different set of voices. <laughs> oh. Hi. Hello. Hello. What is the name of your guys' watch? Hard no. Hard no. Hard no. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, we also have an alter ego called Soft Yes. Oh, there we oh, go. Wow. Yeah. Hard no, Soft Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. What's the name of your watch? We are King George and the Coral Hunters. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. Did we ever really settle on one? I don't think so. Bit of wanderage, yeah. Wait, wait, wait. I was got a couple of different watches the other here? day. Yeah, we've got somebody from all three watches. Oh, that's true. You guys are with Chris normally. Yeah. Yep, 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 yep. So one thing that came up uh, last watch 
that was sort of interesting. This might be a question for you, Diane. Okay. Um, Brett, Brett was mentioning that um, there was a single tree that was growing recently in Antarctica, and I couldn't find information for it online, but I was wondering if this was anything that you might have yeah, heard about. It. I'll say, Diane, that I've looked it up too, and I couldn't find it either. So <laughs> it's it's possible that Guinness Book of World Records 2003 lied to child Rhett. Um, oh. As I was thinking about, I'm like, where did I learn that? I'm like, hmm, I guess that's not a very credible source, honestly. <laughs> um, to my knowledge, there are no living trees on Antarctica. I've never heard of one. Uh, gotcha. That doesn't mean I know everything about. I, to I was told that there was one one single one but now i can't no. find evidence of that so i'm gonna yeah. gonna revise my view there <laughs> so there are i'll give you a little fun factoid though there, there are petrified tree uh chunks whatever you want to call them rocks essentially um, yeah. in That's antarctica cool. we they're did, from we did on king that. george island of all things king george and the coral hunters um <laughs> which is a an, an island just uh off the top edge of the peninsula there are a couple different Antarctic bases there from several different nationalities. So um, I, I've actually seen one of the petrified trees uh, when I visited the Chilean base, Frey base. Yeah, and I was finding some uh, articles. We're going south in now. This search. Neat. Yeah, we're drifting yeah. south. Just going to point out really quick the predated bamboo coral. That looks like there's a lot of predation where we just passed. Yeah. Go ahead, sorry. Yeah, I was seeing uh, some research uh, talking about uh, some uh, palm trees mm. uh, fossilized um, on Antarctica back when it was part of the Gondwana land supercontinent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, Is that yeah, different Antarctica. than Pangea? A um, little bit different, but um, mm. yeah, uh, a couple Can you hundred wide on million Atlanta, years please? ago. Thank you. So yeah, nice. Antarctica sure. used to have a very different Rock climate. Up. Runaway tilt up on Indeed. Us. Rog. Yes. Indeed. It's kind of fun to think about palm trees there. Yeah. Uh oh, it looks like. So yeah, the ship is drifting again from the looks of it. That's right, yep. Yeah, bugger. Okay. It's giving me time to squeeze in a gauge check up here, so that's good. Yeah. Okay. Looks like our science team ashore may be having some trouble with their video and audio. Been kind of having issues the whole day. Okay, yeah, is somebody right. from 12 to 4 like giving off an electromagnetic field? <laughs> 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 because we were having trouble with that all shift and then it, it sounded like it went away and now it's back. I think we were, Megan was just showing Christopher that you could do uh, whoa. But I didn't see all the things he did. Megan with her um, hacks, her life hacks, her, her Nautilus live hacks. <laughs> oh man, she's got good ones. Mm. This is a great, um, great manal here. How do we interpret the map with the elevation contours on channel three? What are the black and red lines? Um, channel, uh, the, the lines on high pack, so the, the track lines. So I believe the red and black lines that are kind of like attached to the ship belong to uh, Hercules and, and Atalanta. Those are their movements that they're making. And then the contour lines um, each line is a, a nu'u or like a, a an up in 10 meter increments. Please correct me if I'm incorrect. Yeah, I correct. think the, the black line is uh, the ship and then uh, yeah, the red and the kind of grayish line are uh, mm. Hurricane Atalanta. So yeah. Mm. And Ooh, we've been, those corals. We've been finding that the closer those 10 meter contour lines are, the more coral and sponge communities we are finding, because it mm. tends to it indicates a steeper wow. area. Mm -hmm. Your guys Ooh. is watching. Well, they're also a lot liking this spot quite a bit. Too. Yeah, they are. That was a dense and patch. Here we're there. in much flatter territory because we're uh, we're currently located on top of the ridge instead of one of the sides. That rock outcropping. 
Yeah. It really brings in the very dense population here. I thought she said fairy, and I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Is that bubblegum, Carl? Believe so. Yeah. Nom nom nom. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I see any. Well, there's some just left of the lasers. Could you zoom in there, please, Rhett? Sure. I think that's bubblegum coral, that wee guy. Okay. That wee little gopala. What is the difference between a, a star snake and a brittle star? Oh, sorry. We saw some of those in our very Come first by, dive, maybe, Ashton, I think. So it looks we got the control, and uh, we are holding position. Okay. Do you want to start stepping back towards where we were? So would you like to go back, or do you like to go straight towards waypoint three? Uh, let's keep on toward waypoint three. So, like, straight no, on... Sure. Zero, yeah. six, zero? That Somehow. looks good. That works for me. Okie doke. I think a brittle star has to do with how the star itself is Go very... Zero six five. Sorry, so Thank the one. We'll move in 50 meter steps. Yep. Press this is now. Can we move uh, on bearing zero six five fifty meters? So yeah, having water flowing over the top of the ridge might have a similar kind of